Okay, as Roy mentioned, my name is Mark Uxusman and I'm working for eBay for almost four years. And uh, I'm managing the data architecture, metadata management, enterprise warehouse, business intelligence. This kind of area of my responsibilities at eBay. And uh, we will uh, spend half an hour, we don't have a lot of time today, just talk about how metadata management actually helps to build uh, come in, guys. Sorry. Come over. Um, how to build agile data warehousing and business intelligence. Because I think many of you know what is metadata management system, how it's important. But it's very important the value what is a metadata management system actually bring to enterprises like eBay. And I just want to spend a couple of minutes to explain uh, what amount of information we have to process at eBay at this time, right now. And uh, we are actually uh, managing 50,000 uh, products. We are uh, dealing with more than 60 million transactions a year uh, sold in goods. And we really have a big data. When people talking about big data, they're talking about maybe thousands of transactions, millions of transactions. We're talking about billions of transactions. You can imagine what information we have to process. And just information to have this and store this information doesn't help. It means we need to build some kind of tools and environment how we can analyze the information and actually increase our revenue and work with our customers. So we will spend a little bit of time, I will just explain to you our basic warehouse uh, environment. And I'm very proud to say that we are managing right now the biggest Teradata system in the world. Uh, our data warehouse is built on Teradata uh, platform and we have two main systems in Teradata. One is what we call enterprise data warehouse it's mostly used for uh, BI analytics, uh, custom reports, and so on. And uh, another system, uh, what we call Singularity, it's mostly built for research and deep analytics data mining. You can see the sizes of the warehouse. It's around 50 pentabytes of data what we're processing. Pentabytes, not terabytes, not megabytes, pentabytes. At the same time, uh, we, a couple of years ago, everybody knows what is Hadoop. Uh, we have to process unstructural uh, information. We're receiving lots of in unstructural information. And we built uh, humongous Hadoop systems. Uh, right now, it's around 50 pentabytes as well. Uh, we, uh, and the system is growing as we're talking about right now. And Hadoop is mostly used for our... Uh, discovery and uh, research and uh, some very deep analysis. Uh, at the same time, our we have to be agile because it's humongous system what we process and our business customers actually talking about give us information. We have to do this research. We have to do the analysis right now. We cannot wait half a year until you will move some information from one system to another one. We need to access right now. So we uh, provide in this humongous Teradata systems, what I just described you, we build ability to almost ad hoc give end users ability to create virtual data marts. So for them to create a virtual data mart, they have to understand what kind of information they have to bring to this virtual data marts. And why this is one of the reasons why we have the metadata management system that end users can go to our online tools, select the information, put a request, and in a couple of hours, database is created for them with data itself. This is why we created Global Directory, what is our trade name for uh, uh, metadata management system, what we call Global Directory. Uh, as all of you know, possibly, uh, that uh, big corporations actually operate in uh, some silo mode that many uh, business units actually working completely independently. Uh, they have their tools, their environment, 
everybody likes wiki pages and so on. And sometimes one uh, business unit have no idea what other business uh, unit is doing or how they calculate the information and so on. And uh, eBay was not a surprise the same, did the same many years ago. And around three years ago, uh, we kind of realized that we have uh, uh, many in, uh, uh, departments, business units calculating the same uh, me, uh, uh, the same metrics or some kind of like uh, output information and using different formulas for, the, for, for, for example, to calculate every selling price in our warehouse. And information was spread around different uh, websites, SharePoints, wiki pages. We didn't have any standards in place. And we realized that it's kind of slow our ability to grow our business and uh, we decided to build our global directory or metadata management system to enable kind of uh, common language that people can talk is actually a metadata management system what we created. Uh, and uh, we started very small and we did the, like what I call baby steps that we kind of move from one uh, side to another side and integrated everything. And I would recommend everybody who would like to build the metadata management system, you cannot create something in one shot because it will be very difficult. It will be completely impossible to do. But you have to have something vision and you have to understand what is your end goal. But at the same time, uh, you have to start somehow to small and do this integration in different ways. We built our metadata management system to support technical metadata and business metadata. And I will show you later on how we integrated everything together. Uh, as you can see, um, on, uh, this is our global uh, directory or meta uh, MDR, metadata management system, consists of two main components, technical metadata and business metadata. And we fully integrated with our online transactional process system, what is built in Oracle. Uh, we have a data informational data platform, what is our data warehouse, is fully integrated and integrated with our reporting or business intelligence tools. And we're using mostly MicroStrategy and uh, Tableau and other uh, BI tools as well, but they're kind of not so popular in, in, in a company. And for data modeling, Power Designer. This is kind of our basic platform. And we created many different standards to speed up and make uh, our processes available. We kind of initiated, this is main ideas how to be agile, because everybody talking about, yeah, we have to be agile, we have to be fast. But you can be fast only when you have standards in place, when you uh, uh, one team talking to another team on the same language, and we're not talking about English, we're talking about technical language, about the same terminology that used across enterprise. And you can imagine that eBay is not only one company, like Roy mentioned, GSI is uh, it's, it's a part of eBay, and they came completely from different world, and we are integrating them, on, and they will talk. They want or they don't want, but they will talk in the same language as eBay talking. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, basic ideas about our success story that we are creating agile database modeling. Everybody kind of maybe know about the agile manifesto and database modeling completely not a part of agile manifesto. The people who created Agile in 2001, I believe, uh, somewhere in Utah, uh, they even didn't think about databases, data modeling. They were pure Java developers, and they kind of talk about how to build the Java applications, but not databases. So uh, we come up with an approach how to build the models for our data warehouse, because we have to manage a lot of information we have uh, approximately 20,000 tables, uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of columns. So you can imagine that uh, this amount of information without appropriate model, you will not be able to deliver anything to our customers. 
And the here is main uh, key successes that we have to achieve and uh, how we organize our work in a way that we uh, can uh, actually support our customers. We, uh, I'm running data architecture steering committee as part of data governance uh, component. We don't want to, I don't want to say that we have a, a very good data governance model. We're not so mature at, at that point. Uh, eBay is 15 years old company. It's very, it's a teenager actually. <laughs> But we are moving to this direction. And we created uh, a couple of years ago data architecture steering committees that people can come over and talk about how to manage data, all the issues. Uh, we do have data governments, kind of data stewardship, data ownership, that just kind of in the beginning stages. Uh, we support product development uh, methodology, common dimensional models. And I will show you how common dimensional models actually help us to build Self service analytics because a very important point here uh, to enable our end user to generate reports on the fly um, ad hoc. Because uh, before, in old way, business came over to technology, build me a report here, build me a report there. Uh, half a year, we're building a report, they come over and say, okay, we don't want anymore this report, all the stuff is old already. We have to start another project. Uh, so we created environment the end user actually can go to metadata management tools. This is why metadata is very important for us to generate reports almost on the fly. And for sure, we have global directory, technical business metadata store, compliance reporting. This is very important uh, point uh, and uh, compliance reporting because metadata is good as it's fresh and it's not old, and it's not outdated. If metadata is not right, everything what you are doing is not right. So we have to measure how our metadata is good. And, uh, I, uh, and this is why we produce a set of compliance report, how to see how metadata is actually close to real life. And uh, when we started this process, uh, I would say, our database model metadata was around 60% uh, compliant. Now we're running around almost 100%, 99.7, 99.5. And uh, on um, business metadata, we 98% compliance. On security metadata, we 100% compliant, and so on. It's kind of very close to 100%. <coughs> Here on this diagram, uh, on this picture, you can see uh, how our common dimensional model actually help us to build our uh, self-service analytics. And uh, our metadata management is a key component of all our uh, integration points because all the models are available in metadata management tools. So uh, as end user, you can come over, take a look on the metadata, pick it up, your uh, tables, uh, your dimensions, fact, uh, metrics, and uh, by using uh, microstrategy, uh, generate reports almost on the fly. And uh, when we started to create common dimensional models, actually we started this just a year ago. We, we used to have uh, very traditional uh, normalized, denormalized uh, tables in our warehouse, our environment. Uh, people used to create reports, technology used to create reports for our end users, basically by demand and uh, a new report, a new table and so on and so on, very traditional way. Uh, but we realized that it's, I already mentioned, half a year report. Another half a year, another report. So uh, we kind of use our layer of architecture, the more normalized way to build our common dimensional model and conform dimensional models that actually we created the shareable environment and we're capable to go from one business domain to another business domain and compare the value and metrics and use the uh, uh, dimension across enterprise. And uh, by that time, MicroStrategy actually come up with uh, MicroStrategy Cubes 
that we actually, when we give the ability end user to generate reports, it's kind of a little bit pre-built reports, I would say, what, what we call uh, guided reports, that uh, all this information sitting in MicroStrategy Cube, so uh, per performance is uh, great and, and we're capable to achieve the result in very fast mode. Any questions, guys? Go ahead. Yes, yes, it's a good question. Uh, I just repeat the question, if you guys, how we uh, created our agile uh, model-driven methodology and how we actually integrated our database model and all this agile processing. Um, it's very important when um, uh, everybody talking agile and we have two weeks deliverable, so it's very difficult to fit into this kind of stage. So when we started to develop our common dimensional models, uh, we uh, kind of, and our architects is very knowledgeable people, we went back to business. We start talking to business and we, uh, our architects very knowledgeable in the business processes as well and working in collaboration with our business users. This is very key, important component. And we're not building the model like from the end to the, uh, from the uh, uh, beginning to the end. We're building the models in a way that we can grow them and expand them flexible enough to expand. We're starting small and build the skeleton of our future model. And after this, we propagate and propagate and propagate. We're not creating tables all the time. We created some structures, uh, dimensions, and we reuse them all over and over and over. So we identify our main business components, business units, business areas, started from the conceptual and logical modeling, and after that we could create our physical models. Did I answer your question? Yeah. I know it's not easy. Yeah. And, and uh, to be honest with you, we keep outside our conversation with business from these two weeks deliverables. And if you keep this uh, in, in balance and talk to your business and realize what business need before these two weeks de deliverables. So you, when this deliverable comes, you already know what they want. This is important. Another question. Good question. We usually have overnight loads. We don't go like, uh, we don't have real time warehouse. If I can answer you, this is kind of very honest. Some data is more uh, like uh, we have uh, our transactional data. I, I just want to have time is ticking. Um, the tra our tracking metadata and tracking data, it's kind of hourly by the hourly, but other information, customer information, all other information, transactional information is uh, daily loads. Um, how the granularity is different levels. We do have uh, common dimensional uh, on the transactional level and uh, on some uh, depends on the com on the dimensions we have weekly, monthly as well. And here just only one of examples uh, of how we are creating our common dimensional models. So that we have, for example, before we got shipping information and shipping department responsible for shipping PI reports and so on. And we have customer departments who are responsible for our customer management, what is BBE is a bad buyer's experience uh, abbreviation. So it was before this we created the system, the analysis 
uh, how dependency shipping of bad buyers experience was not available. Uh, shipping did their work, uh, customers they did their work uh, to create some kind of a report that brings this couple of different metrics to analyze this information. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's, it's a huge project that we had to generate and so on. By using common dimensional model and a set of tools and metadata management tools, we uh, provide the ability to our customers and when I say customer, our business analysts and, and folks, uh, that they can actually come over and uh, using our online web-enabled tools to generate reports and build the analysis and see the dependency of uh, shipping information uh, and uh, our bad buyers experience. For example, if shipping is great, bad buyers experience actually going down and opposite. Uh, if uh, we have issues with shipping, so our bad buyers experience measurement is going up. And I just, it's one simple example of cross domain uh, business intelligence. Yes. 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 And, and here on this uh, diagram, you can see that uh, in the middle, uh, we have uh, our global directory or metadata management system, what is actually a keystone. You can see that we are providing ability to our business to go to our system and be creating self-service analytics, self-service tools. It's very important to provide this kind of ability to end users to go and manage our uh, uh, business intelligence, metadata management tools by themselves. That we, minim we build the platform, we're going away from people uh, or the technology develop some specific reports or uh, some specific set of uh, programs and so we're building the platform for end users and give in power end users with set of tools that they will able to generate business intelligence by themselves. And metadata management is a keystone. Uh, as we go, like business user can go to the uh, creating business terms in our metadata management tool, business uh, terms, metrics, formulas, and so on, document all this information. We generate models on top of this business requirements and business uh, terms and metrics we store all this information in a global directory. Actually, this interface is uh, like real time. As soon model is created, you save the model, it's immediately available in our uh, global directory. And uh, our reporting metadata is fully integrated with uh, global directory as well. When I say reporting metadata, it's microstrategy metadata, Tableau metadata, any uh, reporting tools what we currently have. And end user by using a uh, global directory or metadata repository is capable to select and pick it up and choose what information they would like to see and how to generate this new report. And all this teradata, oh, <laughs> go ahead, yeah. uh, picture, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, so we uh, are capable to, to create these models and uh, create guided reports using dimensional models and microstrategy cubes. Any questions? Uh, approximately how many entities do you make available to your customers and how do you help them deal with the huge volume of metadata? Um, huge volume of metadata. I cannot understand what. Um, so a, a customer or an end user comes and wants to find some information. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that there's a huge amount of potential entities that they can choose from to answer their question. How do you, do you help them find out those answers? Good question. Uh, we um, ongoing, I have training. Because people are changing, people coming, people going, people more familiar, less familiar with the tool. So I just completed uh, uh, training in China. We have office in Shanghai. 
uh, we completed set of trainings in our San Jose office in Seattle and so on. Uh, we educate our people how to use the tool, number one. Number two, uh, we're providing some uh, search capabilities, very uh, robust search capabilities to end users that they will able to kind of pick it up the information in the right way in very fast mode. Uh, number three, we integrate our tool with some environment what business users are more familiar, like wiki pages. And I will show you that uh, we're not creating wiki pages anymore as we used to create them before. It's we're creating dynamic wiki pages fully integrated with uh, our uh, metadata management repository. So we provide again the platform and tools to be for end users that they don't have to even think about how to pick it up uh, this information or that information. It's become very natural for them. Here is kind of a data flow, very kind of very high level. Data architects play a key role in creation of technical metadata. As soon as they're creating data models, uh, we store this, all this information in global directory or metadata management repository. We have all the data sources from different places like wiki pages, our databases and so on, uh, stored in our global directory. And what is interesting here, the global directory, it's not just a collection of information, but it's actually an engine. I would say it's magic is happening all the time that this whole metadata coming from different places actually, uh, we create like a special engine that working all the time uh, and uh, connect some pieces together that we, for example, we connect our technical metadata with business metadata. As soon somebody created a business term, for example, or abbreviation or kind of metric with a formula, we collect this information if report is using this, so we collect, uh, connect this information together and uh, we know that, okay, this uh, specific uh, uh, metric is used by X number of reports. And what columns actually it's stored, this specific metric, in what columns, in what tables it's stored in our model. Yes. 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 It's a it's a right question, and for sure ontology, for sure a framework, for sure a platform. And as I mentioned before, uh, we're using uh, uh, self-service analytic portal and publish out corporate uh, compliance report. It's compliance report is our measurement. It just shows the value what we provide to enterprise. Uh, a self-service analytic portal, it's a tool, it's actually a very user-friendly environment where end users come over and actually find the metadata and use it to generate reports to answer your question. Yes, yes, yes. I will talk about this. Uh, here, uh, our kind of uh, very high level business domain model, what is fully integrated with our metadata management tool. You can see there's nothing new here. We have the same as everybody has. Uh, customer domain, uh, trust and safety, marketing, advertisement, motors, uh, uh, infrastructure domain, shipping domain, and so on. It's, I think each company has the same stuff. But you can see from uh, many different links here that you can just click on this. It just give you a specific interface. You can click the, uh, on this diagram and you will able to drill down to specific table, column, model, and so on and so on and so on. So you can uh, navigate from different places. This is what answer your question, how end user can uh, understand where is metadata. We give different channels for people to navigate to the right information. <coughs> and here are some kind of examples of our uh, uh, global directory of browsing and some other information. Yeah, uh, to answer your question, uh, we built our platform using uh, ASG, uh, Russia. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar, they have somewhere uh, here, they, uh, I think they uh, 
have a booth here, you will be able to take a look on what they're doing here. Uh, and uh, I would say without Rochette, yeah, we would could survive. Uh, we did a lot of customization. We're using this kind of uh, a baseline what Rochette is capable to provide. Um, they, can, they created a specific tool for business metadata, but not a lot. Uh, we, we did a lot of customization, a lot of customization. And here, example of compliance report uh, that I just mentioned before, and you can see that we're almost 100% there. And the amount of information tables, it's uh, uh, 7,000, 10,000 tables, uh, 100,000 of uh, columns, and so on and so on. Uh, uh, it's another kind of point that I already kind of uh, talked a little bit about wiki integration because everybody talking about wiki, our business analysts, I don't know how in another company they like wiki a lot, they just go there writing stories and so on. Uh, but uh, wiki become outdated very quick and uh, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, when they create wiki pages, they fully integrated with our environment. So we creating this kind of creating a special uh, macro, I would say, very very high level. It's very easy to use, very kind of straightforward macro in wiki pages, and any end user can kind of uh, put the specific code into the wiki pages and uh, actually create full interface with uh, our repository, and wiki pages become dynamic and, and pick it up all the time, the fresh information. This is very important. Any question? In um, uh, global directory? In wiki pages, you have to have password and everything. You, you, you have to have rights. In global directory, for sure, uh, we give different permissions uh, for different end users. We have role-based uh, authentication and uh, it's control for sure that uh, everybody can actually log into the system and uh, enter some information, but it will be not available for other people to, to see until this information will be approved by uh, right person. <laughs> it's kind of a workflow, approval workflow for sure we have. Any other questions? Uh, here, some example of wiki uh, pages integration that you can see like, um, here it's a wiki page and it's this wiki page take information from our metadata repository. And a business glossary, uh, meta glossary application, it's actually built on top of uh, Rashet ASG this is what actually we almost using whatever uh, ASG provided to us. And um, all, all the business term, business metrics, workflow, uh, external docs, everything is available in uh, this application and uh, is fully integrated with our technical metadata. And here is our data hub, or uh, I would say this self-service analytic uh, website that uh, Global Director is part of this entire uh, eBay set of tools. And end users can go to this uh, portal and actually uh, navigate to the right information. We build set of uh, web services uh, to empower uh, our end users and uh, they can uh, select the information that they would like to see. Any questions? How long did it take you to pack all the world approach with the domain by domain? It's, I would not say domain by domain. The question was how long is uh, uh, we actually created our system. Uh, I don't want to say that we create we're still creating, you know? We're still working, we're still integrating. I told you that we started very small. First application, what we created, it was uh, model management. It, we just incorporated our 
uh, database models. I would say more that we even didn't have database models for warehouse three years ago. Now we do. <laughs> uh, and um, amount of work, uh, we're spending like three years uh, in a row with very limited resources to uh, folks in India. Uh, this is entire team who created whole application and all those integration points. Uh, and we're going not domain by domain, but we're talking about maybe platform by platform, like uh, model management, one platform. Uh, I'm talking about uh, all the uh, logical models, physical models, and so on. Um, Meta glossary, business glossary is one of the, uh, the first applications that we implemented. Uh, it's still evolving right now because uh, for sure the company as eBay, uh, can you imagine how many different uh, business terms we have and different companies. Um, security team came over and said, okay, we have to be SAX compliance. Uh, and we have no idea how to manage the situation. Uh, so we help them out because we already have model management in place. Now each column, can you imagine 7,000, 10,000 columns? Each column has a flag uh, what kind of security uh, uh, value this specific column has. We have different like PAI information, PCI information, and so on. So each column has a specific flag. And we, from the security perspective, we're 100% compliance. Operation folks came over because Teradata system, what we have, you, you, you imagine it's humongous. So uh, we incorporated all our operational metadata working together with Teradata uh, teams and so on. Uh, this is kind of, I would say, platform by platform. Any question? Go ahead, yeah. Operational metadata. Okay, uh, as I mentioned to you that we have Teradata, we have Oracle. For the warehouse, we, we have Teradata and we have Hadoop. For our LTP system, we have Oracle. So, uh, data dictionaries, basically data dictionaries. Uh, from Oracle, data dictionary. From Teradata, data dictionary. Um, uh, DBC, what is called actually in Teradata. And uh, we're not enforcing, for example, uh, referential integrity in, ter in uh, warehouse because uh, from performance reasons. Uh, and this referential and domain integrity on the primary keys, foreign keys, is available only in our database models. So for some ETL processing, they require to have this uh, primary keys and so on that we have both way integration. From one side, we see all the operational uh, metadata in our metadata repository. From other side, we supply the information to Teradata folks for ETL help them to, to process the uh, uh, ETL processing. So it's two ways of communication. Excuse me? Uh, runtime? No, it's not runtime, daily, daily. It's take time to, to load, it's take time to generate daily. Any question? Uh, business glossary is built on top of Rashet platform. Uh, Rashet is a ASG, is a company, uh, and Rashet is a, um, I would say it's a software platform with no SQL database. Uh, object-oriented database, and they created an application on top of this database. Yes. 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 The, the question was what platform we're using for business glossaries and how it's integrated to the wiki. So uh, we inter completely integrated wiki into our environment, number one. And we're using Crochet as a software platform. Any questions? Go. We don't deal with governance. This is a problem. <laughs> We are a teenage company. 
And when I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Uh, actually, it's 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 very good question. Uh, uh, two years ago, uh, the first person who uh, actually said data governance, it was me, <laughs> because I came from old school, and uh, uh, and data stewardship, even people afraid to say data stewardship in eBay, and now we do have data steward. At least some progress we are doing. Uh, I don't want to say that we don't have governance completely, but for sure it's not mature. And, and it's a lot of work to do there uh, to become to more kind of go from this teenage uh, to some kind of mature uh, level. Uh, from other hand, you know, if I start thinking about, and I from, came from old school and uh, many, many years of experience in this area, and I start thinking about Maybe we don't need this data governance in an old way because we're still agile. Because when we're creating something in half a year, in, in a couple of months, it's become already outdated and old. So we have to be very agile in the, in the right way. But for sure, you have to have set of platforms and tools that will help you to build the governance almost like uh, self-service governance. That if you create a platform and a level of uh, tools and uh, software and ability for people to do self-service, so they become like a data governance in a place by themselves. It's a very difficult topic. I know that people have different views, but to say, do we have data governance? Not really. Any other questions? Go. A lots of work. <laughs> uh, it's magic happened inside metadata repository that we have a couple of uh, uh, smart programs running. I would say like this, the metadata is good as, as less manual intervention. We try to avoid any manual intervention in our metadata management. As soon as people have to data entry something, they will never data entry number one. Uh, data become outdated, not right, and so on and so on. And uh, we are uh, trying to eliminate any linkage, any manual intervention to these integration points. We're using a lots of algorithms, a lots of processes, a lots of uh, standards, and standards actually help us to build this kind of engines inside this metadata repository to link business metadata and uh, technical metadata. Uh, as soon as, like for example, every selling price, we have uh, a metric ASP. So it has a specific formula to calculate. Uh, and we have engines that go to our reporting metadata, looking for ASP somewhere, generate the link, and, uh, and create this linkage between these two places. As in a reporting metadata, we have uh, ability to find, okay, we have a report. I can show, we don't have, we have five minutes, I can demo you on this uh, stuff. We have reports and, uh, and you can see the columns what uh, this report consists of. This information doesn't exist anywhere, only in our metadata management tool. If no questions, I can show you right now, <laughs> if, if you guys are interested. Sorry, I have to sit down here. Oops. This is our tool, for example, our model account. And uh, here you can see all the tables, columns, all this information here all the description, and you're capable to edit. Uh, here, um, list of all the uh, tables in this, uh, oops, what did I do? Ah, this diagram, you're familiar with this diagram, correct, guys? And uh, we have providing different searches uh, to uh, our metadata repository, 
And we fully integrated with search engine, what solar is a search engine that we are using to speed up the search. And if I click account and say physical model, and I can select model, table, column, everything, whatever you would like, and uh, very quick, you find this account information, for example. And uh, uh, you, cre you, you, you see all the diagrams, you can uh, generate diagrams here. You, you see all your tables, all this uh, data lineage. We implemented recently data lineage uh, functionality as well. Uh, for example, I can show you, um, this is kind of a diagram. You click and you see where all the data lineage for this specific table, where it came from. We don't have a column data lineage because we don't using KTL tool in the right way. We don't store the ETL metadata at all. We do it instead of ETL, we're doing ELT. Uh, so we created a specific way to go, at least to figure out from what table this table came from. Is that uh, the consumption? Yeah, yeah. You, you, go, you, you can go through, through the source to, I can show, this is very simple data lineage. I can show you some diagrams that you will not able to understand. Even. I don't, <laughs> but some people do. <laughs> Oops. Uh, where is my? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, everything what you can see right now, uh, it's Rashet is for me to only uh, a repository, nothing else. Everything uh, it's custom developed. All the UI, all the engines, everything is custom developed. We use uh, from Rashet only. Uh, ability to integrate with our database models uh, and do the scanners, they be using scanners for, for Teradata and Oracle. Uh, scanners is kind of uh, interfaces right. you, you can do by yourself. And you said you did this with two or three people over the Yes, years? yes. Uh, two, two, two folks in India, not even here in the US. You know, there's very small team and uh, we use a little bit consulting time with uh, Rashet, ASG company, maybe. And we went live, uh, the first release of the software went live like in three months after we started. So we have to be agile. <laughs> uh, we integrate right now uh, PayPal, uh, we integrate shopping.com, uh, Roy GSI will be the next one that will come here. Um, we have uh, product management, compliance report I already mentioned, uh, tracking metadata. It's a lots of stuff. Uh, see, all, all this, uh, you can see a different level of uh, integration points and uh, application. And um, where is my reporting metadata? Yeah, BI metadata, microstrategy, for example. Ah, okay. It's working. Here's the list of reports, and I, I have no idea what I will pick it up right now, but any report, I don't know. And uh, I just pick it up any report, guys. Uh, trust me, I have no idea what I pick it up. Uh, and you can see here uh, description of this report, uh, location of this report, version, all this metadata, what you need. We don't have data stewards here and primary product managers because it's within data entry. This is a point where people have to data entry, never do. If automatically everything is working fine. And here, this is exactly what we do automatically that we have, uh, we define all the columns for this specific report. And uh, you can click here 
and you can go to uh, column metadata. And it's done automatically. This is what engine is doing for us. That we can, from the report, we jump to the data model and figure out where is this uh, specific table column in a model with all the descriptions and all the stuff. So we link all the stuff together that, uh, and it's working fine because it's automatically done. Otherwise, you know, nobody will do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, our models, we're using Power Designer, but you can use uh, any uh, database modeling tool. And as soon as our repository for our models, it's not Power Designer repository. You can have a uh, Sybase Power Designer repository. But our repository is actually Rashet. As soon as model is created, we, we, we check out model for modeling, your, your data architect modifies the model, checked in back into Rashad. It's immediately available. We have a, a approval workflow so that uh, if junior modeler created something, a senior uh, architect approves the model. And so for the people who have already said that we're talking about your class that they can help Yes. Yes. Uh, business people do a lots of data entry as well. Uh, like, uh, for example, um, there's comments here, correct? We don't have any comment. This is ability we give uh, people, uh, business folks, ability to data entry this information. And it, they don't go even to this interface. They're capable to do this through the uh, web portal, what is more user-friendly interface. Okay, I think. Okay, more questions. Uh, 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 can you send you emails with questions later? Well, sure. Uh, uh, your, uh, my my information here. I can give you the business card. Uh, I let me. I will go to this presentation. Thank you guys for attending. Yeah, here my information, you can give me a call. Don't call me at night, but any other time, please. <laughs>